Welcome to Common Sense Rhode Island. I'm Representative Patricia Morgan, and this is Mike Stenhouse. Um, he's the CEO of the uh, Think Tank, which is the Center for Freedom and Prosperity. And Mike, we've been talking about some of the bad bills, kind of the worst bills that are put in um, uh, for consideration. Um, and if they ever passed, they would be death knells to uh, average families in Rhode Island. Um, so let's talk about some that are kind of wrapped around affordable housing. Okay. Um, I know that uh, the representatives in Moonsocket have put in one that uh, would penalize any town that hasn't met their 10% affordable housing benchmark or number, whatever it is. It's just a goal. Um, it's a goal. It's not a mandate. It's, it's not all a right. Yep. Um, now, for people, um, for, for the viewers, affordable housing is not what we think of as below market rate apartments and stuff. It is housing that is paid for or has some connection to government money. Subsidized. Yep. Subsidized. Subsidized. Usually comes from HUD in at the federal way. government. Right. Right. So people in trailer parks, which are, are affordable housing, they're not counted. People in low rent apartments, they're not counted. It's only where uh, it's Section 8 or some kind of government money has, has made the creation of these apartments or True. houses. True. Okay, so we have to put 10% of those in our, every community has to have 10% subsidized housing. Has to have a plan to get to 10%. Again, be very a careful here. Plan. That's the, only re that's the only requirement is every local comprehensive plan must have a plan to get to 10% level. It is not a mandate to get there. But this bill would say if they're not there, they have to pay a fine. That's right. That's, that's one of the problems with the bills. It's based on technically wrong and bad information. All right, and it's $2,000 per unit. Per unit, sure. So right. if you're supposed to have 2,000 units, which is probably more, more than that, yep. and you only have 1,000, you would pay 2,000 times Times a thousand. thousand. It's two million dollars. Yeah. It's a lot. That's a lot. So part of the whole this this ties into the roadmap, Rhode Island. We talked about quite a while ago on your show. This ties into the federal sustainable development, even the Agenda 21 international agenda, where the whole goal, whether it's carbon taxes like we talked about, is to redistribute money from wealthy people or wealthy communities. communities to less wealthy people or less wealthy communities. This is obviously one of those redistribution ploys where they're gonna take, in Woonsocket's case, where they, they're a poor community but they have an overabundance of affordable housing and they wanna make other towns, I don't know which towns those would be, who, who haven't reached that 10% goal yet, um, to, to pay. So it, it's just, a, it's a redistribution well, scheme and, and based honestly, on this federal agenda and it's just, it, it is complete interference in the free market. It is no place for business for government to be. And it's just dead wrong. I think it's kind of laughable that the wound socket reps put this in. Um, because wound socket a few years ago made splashes in the national papers on only having an economy, kind of having an economy wrapped around the first of the month when all the welfare right. checks came right. in, around food stamps. Right. Do we really want that for everybody in Rhode Island? Well, that's the irony here, is, is that this, when the Woonsocket people are pushing this because it's their town who followed to the T this HUD affordable housing, built subsidized in this, attracted low-income people who are dependent on government assistance, drove out businesses, drove out um, other, other middle and upper income people. But they have the highest people. property tax yeah. in, the, in, right. in Rhode Island. Right. Highest property tax because all those affordable housing yeah. units Don't are pay not much. taxed. Right. Well, not taxed not at, the, at, the, at, at, the, the at the same rate. level. Right. And they've driven out people. So, so you've, got, you've got a city and town in Woonsocket who has suffered because of this affordable housing craze now trying to just double down on that somehow double and bring it to everybody it and, else. Right. And actually punish others That's right. because they haven't That's made right. those same bad choices. Th this is the logic of progressive liberal thinking and this is why uh, this is why it's such a bad bad you know and and again I want to make it clear we're not against poor people making good on their lives my my grandparents came over from Poland right they came over very poor and they just set to work to work trying to build a life here and they got, they did they, they got to a point where they own their own home and and this that's kind of the American dream um, 
it's it the American dream isn't we're going to take from this person right. and give to you. Wouldn't it be better if we invested not invested but took the shackles off our economy and actually had an economy that paid people naturally enough wages so they could buy whatever home they wanted rather than taking money from this this group of people or this community in order to give people some kind of housing subsidy i think people their their, their personal their personal sales you know, uh, self value uh, their financial well-being would be much better off uh, if, if we if had a had, better economy and well, they had good, good job jobs. opportunities. That's exactly. right, good jobs where they might start low, but then they get the next best job and then and a better one and a better one. We keep trying to um, fix the symptoms through, through more and more invasive policies rather than fix the core economic problems we have in the state. And that's where our center comes from. We want every family to be prosperous. We want every family to be able to afford a decent home for themselves and their families and to move up the income ladder. How does this help? How does this help families become more self-sufficient? Well, it doesn't because it's right. just punishing, punishing anybody who doesn't, yep. I don't know. And it gets worse. So, all right, so it gets worse, <laughs> all right. So what is the HUD felony rule? Well, now, now uh, apparently a federal uh, regulation out of HUD, uh, the Department of Housing and Ur Urban Development of Washington, D.C., whose mission is to ensure uh, housing is, is available to as many people as possible. But they now see it as discriminatory for landlords to do a background check on prospective tenants. But so, we've all, they've always been able to do a background check. I mean, now it's going to be now they're going to be punished if they do so. They're going to be punished as being discriminatory because HUD claims that because a larger percentage of minorities uh, have felony convictions than than of than of, of whites that it would be discriminatory to ask for a background check. So now what you're doing is you're putting the safety of the tenants who are there already and the property at risk because you might be renting to a felon and now you have no way of knowing that or finding that out. And, and this is a new rule pushed down for HUD, all, all part of this social equity craze. I'm going to, listen, social equity, we need social opportunity, equal opportunity and fairness Absolutely. to everybody. But, but trying to manufacture neighborhoods in, in a predetermined quota type system <laughs> clearly is not the American way, well, clearly is going to have negative impacts. Because we've always, I think of America as always being built on hard work, yep. initiative, making yep. the right choices, you know, saving, yep. saving for the future. Yep. Working hard, and, earning and, a living. Yep. And kind of going up the ladder based on, on those things, yep. right? Yep. Um, and and they're they're kind of perverting that, uh, not just kind of. They are trying to pervert that. I, I think of landlords; it's their property. They have a right. They have a right to know who they're giving, who they're loaning it to, because you would think so. If if it's destroyed or if something bad happens in it, it falls back on them, right? Um, okay, so let's talk about the last one, which is uh, roadmap, Rhode Island. Yep. So. Um, We've always we've been warning people that this would uh, allow HUD, so people in Washington, to say that if you have an empty piece of land, they can put a high rise on it, no matter what the community, no matter what the neighborhood, the composition of that neighborhood. If they say that HUD housing, a big high rise, belongs in a community on the bay, it'll go there, and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, so. I guess Westchester County has had a problem, yep. and now there's another one. Yeah, Baltimore has been forced to build housing in affluent neighborhoods that they don't want. Let me tie it all together very quickly. We've talked about mass transit and the bus lane to nowhere. Well, We've talked about a carbon tax and this climate change, and now we're talking about affordable housing. This is all part of that federal sustainable development agenda. And this, this governor and her administration are completely hook, line, and sinker on this topic.